Patrick Walsh was unique. He was a newspaper man held in such civic esteem that after he died, Augusta erected a statue to him. It's still here on Telfair Street in Barrett Plaza. Surrounded by a fence and Walsh probably wouldn't have liked that because he was a man of the people. He enjoyed their company, he informed them, and he led them. When the Chronicle celebrated its centennial in 1885, Walsh put together a huge special section touting the highlights of the city. He then sent copies all over the country suggesting Augusta was a place where you would want to invest. He was, with Atlanta Constitution editor Henry Grady, among those southern newspaper men promoting a new south after the war. Grady, for whom the University of Georgia's journalism school is named, joked about his friend Walsh as being so Irish he walked with a brogue. Walsh was not only a newspaper man, he was a politician, serving at different times as a member of the Augusta City Council and the State House of Representatives. He was also a U.S. Senator, and when he died in 1899, he was Augusta's sitting mayor. As a newspaper man, Walsh was exceptional. A printer by background, he made the Chronicle an industry leader in the use of layout and topography. It was well illustrated for its day and used the leading techniques of newspaper production. But Walsh was first and foremost an editor. And while he used his editorial pages to boost Augusta, he also used it to right its wrongs, particularly in its treatment of its black citizens and former slaves. Walsh also had a sense of the newspaper's place in history. He once wrote of Augusta's future, we will not live to witness the realization of this dream, but the Chronicle will live. The workers die, but the work remains. Patrick Walsh was right. He left Augusta with a legacy, but he left its newspaper with a mission. It's time to go back to work.